on this computer. All right, is that working now? That's much it's better. Okay, all right, so it's not recording. All right, so it is April 6th, already April, one fourth of the year gone, just like that. So uh, we're not at home, I'm in the office, and as you can see, I'm kind of bare bones back here. Where'd my big desk go? It's at my home office because we're gonna be bringing in some reclining chairs here and doing IV and oxygen therapies here pretty soon. And so uh, we're kind of doing a little rearranging. Got my reflexology posters up on the wall, my iridology for ear therapies and stuff. And I got hubby pants over here in the corner. Say hi, hubby pants. Hi, hubby pants. <laughs> he's on oxygen still, uh, but he's doing much better. So he wanted to run off and run errands. It's like, no, not ready. <laughs> so, um, we're not doing a cooking demo today, but I do want to go over some things with you that have been a concern. People have been asking me about, you know, do I need to eat salmon? Do I need to eat this or that to get some omegas in me? You know, fatty acids, um, you know, B12, you know, do I get enough? Dr. McDougall says that if you've been vegan for at least two years or plant-based for two years, you do need to supplement with B12 to minimize any risk of being deficient. But I think we're doing all pretty good. I think we all add nutritional yeast and stuff to our like cauliflower cheese sauce and our potato and carrot sauces, right? Are you doing that too, Diane, with the nutritional yeast a little bit? Yeah, I like nutritional yeast on my, on my baked Oops, potato. You're, you're muted, I think. Nope, no, I'm not. Oh, no. What do I do? <laughs> oh, now I, I can't it. hear you. How clever is that not? I heard it. As a thing. <laughs> You hear the dog park? <laughs> it's all speakers and I brought this back, but not the okay up here. Hold on. Hold on. Can you hear me now? Yes. Can you hear oh, me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, good. So what I had to do is find the speaker button here. Okay, talk again. Doggy's barking. Oh, there we go. There we go. There we go. Okay, good. All right. Um, don't know how to get rid of that. Yeah, I got a little screen. Do you see a little weird box on the side here? Or just the three of us? Just the three of us. Okay. All right. I'll ignore that then. All right. So I want to go to our um, Facebook group because I posted some things this morning in anticipation of this meeting today. And I apologize to be all discombobulated today. That happens when I run in off the street and I'm not prepared. Let's see here. I'm prepared. I'm just in the wrong computer, so I wasn't ready here at the office. All right. So go into Facebook. It's going to think about it. Okay, we're going to go over here to groups. Don't know what that is. Oh, it's a lasagna from years ago. Let's see. It's vegan cheese, I'm sure. Let's see here. Okay, let's talk about this for a minute. There's three things, three nutrients that people seem to not get enough of. Let's talk about the B12 first. And I uh, posted this here, this article here about plant-based B12 ideas. And in this article, it goes through and explains to you what B12 is and the importance of it and why we need to have it. Um, and then uh, it talks about uh, how B12 is used for energy. It aids in the production of red blood cells, which carry oxygen, digestion, supports healthy digestion and absorption of vital nutrients, helps with stress. Now, how many of you have been on a call when I've talked about taking my B vitamins so that I don't eat children and kick dogs? Okay. <laughs> And, you know, when there's that day, that, that feeling of e -e 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 in your brain where you just want to like scream because you, you, you just feel this like vibration of itch going on in the inside, but it's not an itch. You don't know how to make it fix or go away. And um, it is amazing how you can take some uh, B vitamins. I prefer liquid. Now, let's talk about the difference here. This is the methacombalamine. Let me sign this here. Um, yes, the methylcobalamine is the good kind. 
the drops I uh, dry like even better than the capsules because I don't want it to break apart in my intestinal tract. I want to get it in me and in my bloodstream like immediately. And so just a few drops of this under your tongue, let it absorb under your tongue and you're good to go. Uh, and it literally will change your mood like instantly. Have you ever heard of people that are going to get like a B12 shot? We also give those here at the clinic. And um, me, I can't take a B12 shot because it's so concentrated and so high of a dose that I don't sleep for two days. But my house is very clean at the end of those two days because I don't know what else to do for two days. <laughs> The one that you do not want to get, and this is important to read the label, is the one that's cyanide, cyanide uh, bopamine, It's, and I'm going to say that word and I'm going to massacre it, but it basically the beginning of it is the root word of cyanide. That's why you don't want that one. So this one's methylcopricolamine. I'm going to try to spell it for you so that you can think that I'm not totally crazy here, cray cray. La -dee -da -dee -da -da. It's got, it's gluten-free, blah, blah. Um, Methacobali, M-E-T-H-Y-C-O-B-A-L-A-M-I-N. Okay, that's the correct one. Uh, don't want the cyanide kind. But when I had teenagers at home, if they started acting a little cray-cray, I would look at them and go, B vitamins, now. And they would go get them and put them underneath their tongue to kind of chill out a little bit. Uh, my one son in particular, he knew what that meant. B vitamins now. And one day he said he didn't want to take them. Oh, you're taking them. <laughs> you know? So before he kicked me and uh, ate dogs or something like that. So anyways, but the, uh, um, it also helps with active uh, lifestyle stress and uh, the maintain a lifestyle, build your adventures and need the right amount of B12. So there's different kinds of bees as well. And so I like to do a complex. Now this one here is just the B12 by itself. They do have, and I didn't take time to grab it. They do make a uh, combination with your B1, your B2, your B6, and your B12. And that to me is the best because it hits all the bases and covers all the tracks, okay? Um, so they're giving you some examples here uh, B12 is not found in food. And that's one of the things that we want to talk about. It's actually a certain bacteria that's made in the colon. And uh, unless you're eating potatoes from dirt that's been grown in manure, I don't think anybody wants to go and eat poop anytime soon. I guess a hardcore vegan might sit down to a plate of their own fecal matter. Not happening in my life, okay? It's kind of like that one practice of drinking their own urine. Mm, that's not happening in my lifetime either. So uh, they supplement cereals just like Kellogg's and General Mills. You know how they add minerals and vitamins to the, the food. Now, I'm really leery of cereals that say that they have been fortified with iron. Which kind of iron? Is it from a spinach plant? I doubt it. Is it from a metallic rock? Mm, that's not the one I want. I don't want the kind that's absorbable from the plant-based uh, nutrition. So we'll get more iron and stuff like that from eating the, the leafy greens, then we roll out of a box of cereal. Um, sometimes the vegan milk is fortified in B12. Um, they talk about oat milk and soy milk being the easiest. Now I'm not a soy fan, so I would say the oat milk is a good option. Uh, Marmite is an option. And I've heard that that tastes so disgusting that people do not even want to think about taking it. Um, Let's see. It says also, though, that if you do eat Marmite, that uh, if there's a myth that mosquitoes don't like Marmite, and so it won't eat people that eat Marmite. So it's like somebody else on uh, Facebook asked me a question about mosquitoes, and they were getting eaten alive. And I said, stop eating bananas and peanut butter, because the bananas and peanut butter, the, the smell secretes through your skin, and the mosquitoes are attracted to that. And I know this from living in North Dakota for five years where it snows nine months out of the year and it's just thick, massive humidity and mosquitoes, uh, super thick, three months out of the year. And in those three months, the military base would remove all peanut butter and all bananas off the shelves because they knew that it was going to cause, uh, are you okay? Okay, so you unplug or turn it off for a minute while you rest, while it's charging, okay. It's got quiet all of a sudden because he's charging his um, oxygen machine. Um, but anyways, they would remove the bananas and they'd remove the peanut butter from the shelves 
to prevent people from getting attacked more than normal. I mean, it was so bad up there that you couldn't have fences in your backyard because the mosquito spray truck would drive through the backyard spraying everybody's yard like every week. And we didn't know anything about what that was all about back then. I was too young of a mom to know. Uh, but um, that is one way to keep mosquitoes down. And evidently eating Marmite is um, uh, an option. So if you, you're asking me what Marmite is, does anybody know what Marmite is? Diane, do you know? Carolyn, have you ever heard that before? I've heard of it, but I can't tell you what it is. I've heard of it being from Australia, I think. Uh, yes, let's see here. Marmite is a brand of savory food from the United Kingdom. And it says New Zealand and at different places, but it um, tastes like, what does it taste like? Distinctive flavor, um, like a yeasty, salty, soy sauce, consi consistency of uh, engine, old engine oil. And uh, a lot of people say that it tastes like engine oil, but um, that's not my first go-to. My first go-to is going to be uh, the nutritional yeast, as you'll see here on our next option, the vegan cheese are going to be fortified. Now, fortified means that they've added it. They've gone and got them some vitamins and they've added it to the food. That's not the same thing as a food that's naturally rich in that particular nutrient or um, uh, mineral. So nutritional yeast, we have our favorites. I've gone on and on about the Nutrilicious and how much better that flavor is. I can literally eat it right off the spoon. It tastes kind of like a Parmesan cheese kind of a flavor, not quite, but it's got kind of a texture like that. And then uh, you've got the uh, like Bragg's and it has a little bit more of a bitter flavor to it, but it's still very, very good. And it adds just a little bit of a cheesy to our food. It's grown on trees. And uh, then there's tofu or tempeh, they're B12 enriched drinks, again, enriched same word as fortified. It means it's been added to. Uh, this particular one is uh, talking about uh, getting this enriched drink from Sunshine, this company Sunshine, and it's got 50 milligrams of caffeine. Well, let's not go there. We kind of defeat the purpose of the B vitamins. We're going to destroy our adrenals with 50 milligrams of caffeine. Stop it. You know, stop the madness. So, supplements if we have to and that would be what this is you know the supplement like this if you're not going to get enough uh, nutritional yeast now i know beth and i know samantha they shake the nutritional yeast on just pretty much everything all right so let's go back over here will this move over yes it will okay let me close that let's close this one uh scrolling down the next one was the omega-3s and that's when people think that they need to get, um, you know, more fish in their diet. They need to get some salmon or they got to get something that way. So let's look at some better options for that. Uh, we only need, for omega-3 fats, we only need 1.1 gram per day, while an adult needs 1.6. And remember, we talked about weights and measurements, a gram being about a quarter teaspoon. We're not talking a lot, okay? Um, but it talks about, um, you know, how everybody else gets it and how we should get it as a plant-based eater. So it says, it's important to note that omega-3 fats are found in three different forms, DHA, EPA, and ALA. ALA is most abundant in these plant-based sources, but DHA and EPA are a little more difficult to obtain on a vegan or vegetarian diet. ALA can be converted into uh, the other two types, but it isn't the most efficient method of obtaining EHA or DHA. Now, I don't know what those letters stand for. All I know is that, um, don't get confused by the articles here in the middle talking about avocados. That's not where you find it. Uh, you can get it in flaxseed. So a lot of people, um, well, like on the maximum weight loss for McDougal, we're supposed to be avoiding nuts and seeds that are because of their high fat content. But uh, for added, uh, fiber and bowel movements and stuff like that. Chia seeds, flax seeds are very key. We're talking about adding just a little bit to uh, your oatmeal in the morning kind of thing. Remember I told you how Dr. Young, not Dr. Young, um, Dr. McDougal eats oatmeal every day so he doesn't have to think about it, you know? And so right here, it's doing the pictures down here in the bottom, but um, 
uh, you could add that to your oatmeal. You could add chia seeds to your oatmeal. We'll talk about that again in a minute here. Walnuts, too high in fat for losing weight, but it has 2.7 grams of the omega-3. So that's you know, more than double what we need as women. Seaweed and algae. I love the, the little nori wraps that we do with the rice and the vegetables. I, I found out you can actually go and order just a cucumber roll and it's just the slices of cucumber wrapped in the lettuce and the seaweed. Um, I don't know how much you'd have to eat to get that equivalent, but uh, you can sneak them into your recipe by um, sprinkling it on. I actually have a seaweed thing. If I was at home, I'd show you. It's got uh, ground up nori in like a shaker, like a salt shaker, because it's from the sea. It's got a little bit of a salty flavor to it. You can actually sprinkle that on your food like you would salt, but not have the added salt, but you would have the salt flavor. You'd have that savory and you'd be getting some, uh, definitely some good omegas from that. Uh, canola oil, we're not even going to discuss because we know we don't want to add oil to our food. Uh, hemp seeds and hemp hearts in particular, high in protein. I think there's 10 grams of protein in just a tablespoon of hemp seeds or hemp hearts, excuse me. And um, more than half of your daily omega-3s. Now it's only half. We're only supposed to have like one point something. So it's like less than half. So maybe not the best source. Edamame would be um, 20 percent so that's even less kidney beans 10 percent chia seeds whack a impressive five grams of omega-3s there's our winner right there the chia seeds remember we made our recipe the other day and we used the the water and the chia seeds to make a little egg okay well i didn't want to waste it when we finished the class and so i added cinnamon and it was delicious as a chia pudding. Have you ever done the chia puddings? Yeah. So the chia pudding, um, I find to be very delightful. And what a, what a good way to sit in front of the TV and, and have a little snack that you don't have to feel guilty about, you know? And um, it just sets up so beautifully. And the ratio that I had on that egg was, I believe it was one tablespoon per quarter cup, I think was that what it was? And it's a good texture. It's not too thick. It's not too thin. It's just perfect for the egg texture and great for the pudding texture. So that's an option for us to get the right omega-3s. And uh, some of the reasons why we need to get the omega-3s um, right here, promotes heart health, reduces inflammation, improves cognitive function, protects eye health, um, improves mental health, and then there's the omega-6 to omega-3 ratio. It says some research suggests that there are health benefits to maintaining a low omega-6 to omega-3 ratio, particularly related to inflammation, heart disease, and mood. Most of us get plenty of omega-6s and they are commonly found in plant oils and uh, plant oils like canola oil, which we're not using, but we may not be getting a comparable amount of omega-3s. Some research has found that a typical Western diet has an omega-6 to omega-3 ratio of 20 to 1, whereas a ratio of 2 to 1 or 1 to 1 is the most health-promoting. While an option, um, optimal ratio is not strictly defined in research, most evidence points to a benefit of increasing omega-3 intake. So throwing them into your smoothies, uh, throwing them into your pudding, um, the oatmeal idea is great. A lot of people really like that. It just makes the oatmeal a little bit more hearty. But, you know, look at the, down in the right hand corner, you see that um, chia pudding that they were making. Pretty good. Here's another thing, another source of omega 3s. Now, notice you have the flaxseed oil, which is 7.3 grams per tablespoon. That's a lot of flax. You'll be pooping for days. Now, I can't handle flaxseed. If I have it at all, it has to be ground because the flax seeds themselves are kind of a violent reaction for my digestion. Chia seeds, on the other hand, are five grams per ounce, and I'm able to tolerate them with no problems at all. Walnuts, 2.6. Again, if you're trying to lose weight, that's too much fat. Canola oil, we're not even gonna discuss. Salmon, we're not gonna discuss. Herring, we're not gonna discuss. Soybean oil, nope. Sardines, mackerel, nope all the way down to 0.3 grams for a half a cup of um, edamame, which is the soybeans like you get, you know, at the appetizer at an Asian restaurant. That's a lot of edamame to get just barely a third of a gram. 
So your better choice is again, back up here with your chia seeds at five grams per ounce, and it's easy to get that in. All right. Um, bottom line, it says omega-3s are important for a variety of reasons from your brain health and heart health to your skin health and several things in between. These nutritional unsaturated fats can be found in a variety of foods. And it says uh, sneaky signs that you might be deficient in omega-3s. Let's just take a look at that real quick. What would, what would a deficiency in omega-3s look like? It would say your hair and skin might be dry and flaky. You might feel anxious or depressed. Um, it says you might have joint pain, kind of like you're lubricating your joints, I guess. Uh, your blood pressure is higher than normal. You have extra belly fat, things like that. So um, good to know. Just kind of some FYI, stuff that we need to pay attention to a little bit on our whole food plant-based diet. All right, and then we go over here and I think we're down to the dandelion. So I'll say, so we did the omega-3s, we did the B12, and the last but not least was the D sources of vitamin. Now, if you remember, we talked about this a little bit more at length that uh, if you were to go out here and search and ask what foods, contain D3, for example. You would see here that it would be trout, it would be salmon, sardines, cod liver oil, soy milk, cow's milk. And again, that's not, that's stuff that's been supplemented, right? So what's the easiest way? That is back to where we talked about Dr. McDougall talking about how you can just go outside without sunglasses because it, it likes to come through your retina, without sunglasses, without long sleeves, and let um, the um, uh, sun rays get to your exposed skin, your exposed face, your open eyes, and be able to um, have it absorbed that way. And in 10 minutes a day, you're going to get the right amount. So just this little short video here really quick. And I know I can talk and write at the same time. I'm sure I can. <laughs> Three minutes. Here we go. Sunshine and vitamin D. Can you tell me? Hello, I'm Dr. John McDougall. And I live in sunny California, and that's where I run the McDougal program up in Santa Rosa, California. So we have plenty of sunshine here, and that gives me an opportunity to get the sunshine vitamin. You know what that is. You learned about it all the way through school. Sunshine vitamin. That's vitamin D. That's right. The sunshine acts on the skin and converts cholesterol into this very essential vitamin called vitamin D. That's where you get your vitamin D from, is from the sunshine. Now, admittedly, in our society, People get too little sunshine. As a result, they have problems with low vitamin D levels. This happens because people wear a lot of clothes. They stay in office buildings. Dark-skinned people have moved north up to New York or London, and so they require more intensity of ultraviolet light because their skin is adapted towards the equator environment. And they move to higher latitudes, and they get less sun exposure. And as a result, it's common for people to have low vitamin D levels. In fact, this is one of the most common tests ordered by doctors these days is a vitamin D level. It's sad to say almost everybody flunks it. Yeah, 50 to 90 percent of people who take a vitamin D blood test, they fail the test based on current standards. Now the response of the doctor should be, well this means you need to go out and get more sunshine, but that's rarely communicated to the patient. Instead, just like the rest of medicine, the communication is buy pills, buy pills, buy pills. Well, this is part of what I call disease mongering. You turn healthy people into patients, you tell them they got a disease called vitamin D deficiency, and you hook them on drugs that they have to come back to the office to get evaluated and they have to get more blood tests. It just increases the business terribly. Well, it's not the right answer. Taking vitamin D pills cause nutritional imbalances. They're associated with an increased risk of pancreatic cancer and prostate cancer. Raises uh, your bad cholesterol. 
Uh, it increases the occurrence of uh, kidney stones and other kidney and autoimmune problems. Taking pills cause nutritional imbalances. The right answer, if you're worried about your vitamin D level, is to go out and get more sunshine. The other thing involved here is an over-exaggeration of what normal is. People are told that they have to be 30 nanograms per milliliter or greater to pass the vitamin D test. In truth, the scientific research says that you only have to be at 20 nanograms per milliliter to pass. Well, if you exaggerate what's normal, you get a lot more people as patients. That's one of the problems, too. So get a vitamin D test if you're worried about it and respond appropriately by using the correct normals. Anything below 20 nanograms per milliliter means you get more sunshine, not take pills. You get out and get more sunshine, more sun exposure. That's the answer. It's the most uh, productive way to get your vitamin D, safest, non-toxic, and, of course, absolutely cost-free. I'm Dr. John McDougall. Thank you for listening. Okay. So as he said there, um, let me stop sharing here for a second. Um, as you can see, the... Um, as he's talked about before, 10 minutes is all you need. So walk into your mailbox and box and taking your time to do it. Go out there and talking to your dogs for you, Diane, or, or just walking around the yard and smelling flowers in the fresh air, you know. But getting out and getting fresh air and sunshine is number one boost inhibitor. I mean, not inhibitor, increaser. Uh, you're going to feel so much better. Depression vanishes. I mean, that's why they have such a hard time with people that live in like Seattle and stuff being depressed and uh, areas of the country where there's less sunshine, England and things like that. There's not enough sunshine. You're going to get the vitamin D with a little bit of rays that are coming through because the sun's up. You can actually see. It's not like Alaska where it's dark until noon. But you're going to want to get that 10 minutes in. And you can do it in increments, but you want to get it in so that your body can actually do its job and properly absorb and uh, convert that cholesterol, as it says, uh, the sunshine converts cholesterol to the vitamins that your body needs to prevent some of those deficiencies. So that to me is really, really important. Um, another reason why you do not want to supplement with vitamin D and vitamin A, I'm going to throw that one in there too. There's something that happens in the breakdown inside your body that converts it to a type of, for lack of a better word to use, alcohol. And uh, they have people that have high toxicity and it's as if they had uh, like a liver disease or some other uh, alcohol related toxin in their body. And even though they don't drink, where did it come from? They were over supplementing the D's and A's, um, you know, through pill form. And that's not what we needed. So just good old fashioned sunshine and foods that, that thrive on sunshine, your, your uh, leafy green vegetables, things like that, that you're gonna uh, not necessarily get your D's from, but you're gonna get all your iron and other things that will work together with the, the D vitamins that you're absorbing from the sunshine, okay? What questions do you have about any of that, Diane? Did that cover the bases for you? I think that did a good job. Yeah, all right. Um, I just wanna make sure that, uh, um, where we're not being deficient, not forgetting something and causing other issues. And it's, and like I said, you'd have to be straight up 100% rigid vegan for two years before it's even a problem. And uh, most of us are not rigid. Uh, I had fish at a restaurant just the other day. Why? You know, because we were out with our son celebrating and um, that was a choice that I made. And I'm going to have that residue of fish in my system for the next 120 days. So was it worth it? Maybe not so much. You know, uh, what is it that we're looking for when we do things like that? It's kind of like the hot dog. I thought I was addicted to hot dogs. And it's not the hot dog I wanted. It was the mustard and the sauerkraut. So I can take my lentil tortilla and shove sauerkraut and mustard in there and think I'm having a hot dog. Because that's what I'm, I'm salivating right now. I'm just talking about <laughs> that's me drooling. <laughs> um, but I, I just, it's a flavor thing. It's an enhancement thing. It's kind of like that bacon. Uh, we're really not wanting bacon. You know, if you actually tasted raw pig straight out of the slaughterhouse, 
it ain't gonna taste like ham in your in your sandwich. It's not gonna taste like ham on you know Christmas morning because that meat has been smoked and cured and seasoned and all these things have been added to it to make that nasty, bland, rubbery meat texture, flesh, whatever you want to call it, palatable. So a big difference between deer meat and a store-bought sausage, right? Because of all the seasoning things that they've added. So it's a flavor thing more than it is a benefit of eating that particular food. So if we can you know, get our hot dog fixed by having a sauerkraut wrap with mustard, great. If we need to do that with, you know, uh, the fish, I could have done just as good by putting the coleslaw in the corn tortilla with some uh, salsa and, you know, stuff like that. That would have been just as good and just as crunchy and just as fun to eat, correct? So that's what we have to kind of weigh our our um, plus and minuses are, are, are poison, if you can say. The weather's getting great here. I plan on walking more this week. Any plans for you up there? Are you still snowing or what you got? Uh, this is monsoon week, so it's been raining. <laughs> Ooh, okay, all right. I could use a little rain on my garden I planted yesterday, day before yesterday. So They came to cut my grass and I was afraid they were going to get stuck in the backyard because they it's happened before they take the mower down the back of my yard and they've gotten stuck in the mud because it's so wet. Mm -hmm. So they didn't do that. They took the weed whacker down there and cut down the grass. <laughs> cool. yeah, that's good. And it was probably to their benefit. I don't know what they're going to do out at my house this week because I haven't had them come since uh, I didn't have them come in February or March for the last two months because the grass was just not growing and it was a waste of money for them to come mow over grass that wasn't any taller than it was last month, you know? But now after a couple of rains, you know, we got some, you know, three inch blades of green grass and I've got some 12 inch weeds, you know, so they're going to have to like kind of maneuver through that and get that cleaned up. Our neighbor was so sweet. He asked if he could mow the side nearest his fence because uh, my drive is what, honey, how long is that? maybe two, 300 feet long and it butts up along his property line. And he asked if he could mow that because it keeps the snakes down. Nobody told me there were snakes. <laughs> so, yeah, I think we're going to have the long guy do the other side of the drive, too, just in case. But he's been, do he he's been doing the property, uh, but we hadn't had him doing the drive. We thought it would look good, just kind of rugged and natural back there. But if there's snakes involved, I think he needs to go mow it. So, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I had a dream last night that I had a puppy. What does that mean? <laughs> and you should get a dog <laughs> my little cat has been so cute and the allergies that those that um na nature sunshine uh allergy capsule that i was opening up the little powder i put through the little cup and drink it uh it's worked i'm able to cuddle her and she loves to be cuddled and now that she's had been fixed and she's got open rain now she doesn't have to live solely in the chicken coop uh, the door is open. She can come and go from the chicken coop. She prefers to crawl underneath the little crack we leave in the garage and come in there and sleep at night on top of one of the boxes in there or this bag that we just had dirt in. She likes to lay on that thing. But every time it's like they say cats don't know their name. Well, I disagree. Oh, I disagree. I go out there and I can say, Tessa, maybe it's the sound. I don't know. She comes a running and wants to be picked up and cuddled and she wants to fall on my face softly. And if I try to move my hand, she pulls my hand back in. I mean, she's like a puppy that's quiet, <laughs> that has a litter box, you know? Although now that she's an outdoor cat, she's decided that any soft sand in my yard is open season for a kitty litter box. Yes, they don't, they don't get the difference. I had a sandbox as a kid and my cat would use it as a litter box periodically. <laughs> And it's what's so silly is, you know, we had her in since we got her. So all the way through for four months, she was in the chicken coop, except when we were out with her. And she used that litter box all the I was even buying the fancy, expensive, pretty litter you see advertised. And um, she'll use it when she's in the garage, but she'll just use the yard now. It's like, well, that defeats the whole purpose of spending that much money on fancy litter. So I got to cancel that order because I'm not going to keep paying for her. She's going to use my my soft sand yard for a kitty litter box. But she's so funny. I, I didn't realize that they 
bury it and cover it up until they can't smell it anymore. She yeah. keeps smelling it to make sure that it's covered completely. And uh, I didn't realize that either. So I'm learning all about the cat kingdom. But last night I dreamed about a dog. So I don't know what that means. My husband's falling asleep so we can talk about dogs because he's not listening. So, <laughs> so how are your babies doing? They're good. They're all having a nap. They don't want to go outside because it's raining and I don't really feel like wiping off 20 feet. Uh huh. Yeah, that's no fun. Uh, we used to have a dog, a Maltese, that uh, had allergies to everything, including the grass. So we mm. had to put these special little boots on her every time she wanted to go outside to go to the bathroom. That was a big pain in the neck. She didn't like the boots. So mm -hmm. she'd take off the boots and then she'd still have the rash. And then she'd start licking it and biting it. You know, oh, it was, it was a horrible existence for that poor little thing. And, and then when her owner wanted her back or uh, another lady with another Maltese asked for her, it's like, okay, you can have her. So, <laughs> so she has a sister now and gets a little play <laughs> after on some beautiful property. So anyways, we'll see what the dream holds for us. And uh, I'm gonna, my husband's now fallen completely asleep. I'm gonna have to get him up and get him home. Um, I've been wearing him out, but I take him with me because he can't drive himself and bless his heart. Um, he's doing way better, so much better, so much better. Good, good. But uh, he'll have a really good oxygen rating and then he'll take off across the parking lot or something. And by the time he gets there, it's in the eighties, not good. Not good. So, and that's with the oxygen on. So we have to constantly be saying, you know, breathe, wow. breathe, you know. Um, I'm a shallow breather. And I, if I'm watching a, a, you know, a dramatic episode in a movie, I'll, I'll the episode will end, the traumatic section will end. I'll, I'll find myself on, you know, like, oh my gosh, I've been holding my breath for that whole five minute scene or what, you know. So, you can only go four hour, four minutes without air. So obviously it wasn't that long, but it seemed like that long. But yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. Yeah. All right, sweetie. So you got your stuff in the mail? Yes, yes. Good, good. And, was, and I told you, it looked like my mother packed it. You know, she was oh, that's so right, that's right. That's <laughs> right. My my mom was similar in the fact that she was so meticulous about it that Christmas morning would take forever because she would want to save the wrapping paper. So she would take the peeler knife and cut along the tape. And I mean, it would take her forever just to unwrap a package, you know? And so that was insanity on the steroids. So it was like, in my house, it was like, rah, rah, rah. you know, <laughs> it's just paper or just whatever. So, yeah. all right. Well, any questions for me this week? Anything you want me to uh, do a demo on next week or talk about? No, I don't think so. Um the, the doc said my eyes, that my astigmatism's gotten worse, and, and he doesn't actually know why. So I wonder, I'm going to look into that. Ah, okay. So did he do a new prescription? Was it an improvement, or is it because of the astigmatism that's gotten worse? The astigmatism, because I, he, she showed, so she, she showed me the, what my glasses are now, and what the new ones are. No wonder I couldn't see, you know? It's like, dang, I didn't think my eyesight like, was that bad, but. Mm, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, see, mine, mine was just the opposite. They had to keep improving the prescription until finally it was like, you don't need glasses. Yeah, I'd love to have that, but I've been wearing glasses since I was six, so. I should have been. I think I should have been, but I didn't get them. My, my family was really poor, a whole nother story. But um, it wasn't until I got my driver's license in my first car when I was 17 that I took myself to the doctor because I couldn't read any of the street signs. That's how nearsighted I was. It's like anything past the dashboard and I couldn't see it. So I'd have to pull over, get out of the car, walk up to the street sign, write it down on a piece of paper, get out, go to the next corner, write it down. You know, wow. back when we didn't have GPS, we only had maps and you got to follow along the maps to find out where you're going. So, uh, but that's how I found out that there was a true face on the moon and leaves were individual, not just a massive blur of green. Wow, wow. <laughs> no, I couldn't see the, I couldn't see the uh, blackboard first grade. Yeah, I always sat in the front too. You sit in the front too? Yeah, I went home and said, mom, I can't see the, the blackboard. And she took me to get my eyes checked. And well, no, I couldn't see the blackboard. It was all blurry, you know. Yeah, yeah. And we, we wouldn't know that. I mean, it's, unless you've got a really on the ball pediatrician that's going to test that when they're younger, they, they don't catch that stuff. 
No, especially not back then. I mean, you know. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. So, all right. Well, we're working on the itinerary. We should have some news in the next few days here. He's really working on that hard, trying to get that situated for the, the trip this summer. And we're going to figure out what that's going to entail. And then um, we will be headed your way. There is a little talk about just him and Don going so that I can finish up some stuff here that needs to be done. Uh, and then we've got the garden in full blow. Nobody's gonna water my garden for nine weeks, nobody. So we would have wasted all that money and time to have <clears throat> nothing to show for it. So I wanna be able to can a lot of that stuff. Uh, I am gonna have to meet him, uh, I think at least once and spend about a week because uh, a lot of our kids are gonna be in the same area. And we miss them at Christmas time. So we wanna miss them in the summertime. And his um, 51st year high school reunion, because of COVID, they couldn't do it last year. Uh, but his 50 year, 51st class year reunion is uh, happening all in that same kind of area within about 250 miles of each other. So I will probably fly in for that, but we're not quite sure yet. But while they're at the house, if I don't come, they will call you and get you on the phone with me while I'm there. Okay. I, know, I know we have a trip planned in September. Other than that, we don't have anything that we plunked money down on yet. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, we'll definitely be there. Um, his, his reunion is the last weekend of July. So I'm thinking that that's going to be one of the last places we go before we head home and get home probably the first week in August. So I think we're going to go east first this time, I think was kind of the, the hint. We're not quite sure yet. Uh, which would put us up in your area in the June time frame versus the latter part of July, like last year. Okay. okay. If we have, any, have anything, I'll let you know okay. in advance. Well, I'm hoping to get to see Gina too. We missed her last year because she was going into the city with her son. Um, uh, and you saw the announcement that she's having a baby girl. Did you see that? No, I did not. Yeah. Oh. So she's got a surprise baby girl on the way. Yeah, oh, uh, they did a, a gender reveal popping a balloon and the pink confetti came out. So she's got the two boys and a girl now. So the little girl's going to have a little sister. So Ooh. fun stuff. Cool. All right, sweetie. Well, if you have any questions, always just shoot me a text or call me on the phone. I'm here to help you anytime I can. Okay. Hey, thanks a bunch. All right, sweetie. Love you. Talk you to too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.